What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and I am so excited to share this video with you. We've got a massive tech haul, um, and we're gonna follow it up with all the unboxings of these items, and I'm super excited to share it with you. I don't get to do this very often. I'm not a large YouTuber that just gets this kind of stuff for free or anything. This is money that I am paying for, uh, or these are items that I am paying for with my own money, so um, it, it was very expensive, but in the line of work I'm in, it is almost a requirement to have the latest and greatest just to make sure that everything runs smoothly. I teach courses in Unreal Engine 5.1, and when you're showing a course with the latest features, you have to use those latest features, and if your card can't support it, you're not going to look very professional. So I actually had to buy a bunch of new cool stuff, and I am very excited to use it because I'm a gamer at heart, and you and I both know that this stuff is great for gaming as well as work. So I'm excited to share it with you, and uh, yeah. Before we get started, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not subscribed because 99% of you are not subscribed. And that's a pretty bad number. So if you like this one, be sure to click on that thanks or sub button below. So jumping right into it, what do we have first? Uh, obviously the big guy on the table is the Ultra Gear 32 GN650. This is a 31.5 inch 1440p, that means it's QHD, and 165 hertz monitor. So this is gonna be very, very exciting. Um, I'm stoked to get this set up and everything we're gonna do an unboxing on this one and basically i got this monitor because of the gpu i'm upgrading to and its capability i'm not quite ready to go to 4k yet um but i do believe that uh 1440p is going to be great thanks to bud in the uh discord for chatting me through it and convincing me to jump to 1440p i did want to stay at 1080p because i thought it would just you know if, if i'm at a lower res everything's going to run great regardless but with the gpu i have it makes sense to move up a little bit which is exciting as well so i went from a 24 inch curved uh 1080p monitor to a 32 inch or 31.5 inch 1440p monitor that's super exciting so why did i go for this well let's just jump into the big boy right here i'm getting this installed this is a 4070 Ti. I know a lot of you have mixed feelings about the 4070, but there is no arguing that in terms of price to performance at the top of the line, this is a good buy. It's overpriced. Obviously, I would like to have spent much less on this, um, but it is a great card. And when you're working in the industry I work in, you kind of just have to cough up the money and, and suck it up once in a while. And that's kind of what I did. It was way more than I wanted to spend at $850 for this model. The reason I went with this one, uh, there was an $820 version that I could have gotten, but I did go for the $850 version because uh, this card specifically has an extra HDMI slot. So the four, no, the three DisplayPort slots and then two HDMI slots, that's a total of five outputs. And that's one of the problems I have with my current PC is it's a 5700 XT and it has four outputs. So I have my three monitors and I have another monitor mirrored so that, um, you know, we have a second monitor that people can watch and I can't plug my VR in. So now that we have an extra HDMI port, I can have my VR plugged in all the time and still have our exact same monitor set up. Then one thing that isn't here, but I'll show you a picture of it or a video of it. I'll toss in a clip here, here, um, is a Westinghouse. I got a Westinghouse Roku TV, a 50 inch HD TV in 4K. That's right behind me in or right in front of me, right behind you guys uh, in the stream room so that I can always see chat. I can always see subscribers. I can always see all the new events that happen on stream on the big screen TV. So I'm not gonna have to be just uh, sitting at my desk trying to read what everyone in chat's saying. I could walk around my room and do all kinds of cool stuff and still see chat on the screen. So that's pretty cool. Um, it was just a cheap TV. It was like $220, came with Roku already installed, has, an HD, uh, has a network port, an ethernet port, so it has connectivity. You can connect all the apps to it. So it just did what I needed it to do. And it's at 4K for 200 bucks, not too bad. 50 inch TV for $200. I think that's a pretty great deal. So we'll put this down here. Speaking of, this headset is currently wired and broken. Um, let me show you actually this piece. It just comes off. It's completely broken over here. And I tried to super glue it, uh, did not work. And I have a video on how I'm actually going to fix this because I found some 3D printed parts that I can use for it. But for now, this is the best I had and it's wired. So when I'm coming over here to record, um, I actually have to 
you know, have a long wire going all the way across over there. Not super comfortable. So, tech upgrade. We are now wireless. I got the exact same Logitech Pro X wireless version, so I can walk around the room and still chat with everyone, reach out up there, see where I'm going with this, more streaming, more um, interactivity, more recording videos without having to get this weird cable setup every time I do it. I think that this is going to be a great addition to the setup. Speaking of streaming, we are going to need a new streaming card because all of the new equipment I have is for 120 hertz, uh, 120 frames per second on the PS5. Um, I'm going to be recording in 120 frames per second or 120 hertz. Even though my monitor is 165, I record in 120. That way I can cut it to um, 60 frames per second for streaming. And everything just works really well like that. So the old HD60 does not support 120 frames per second throughput. This does. This is the Elgato HD60X, and the HD60X does support 120 frames per second throughput in 1080p and 1440p, while allowing you to record in 1080p60 or stream in 1080p60. So I think this is a great upgrade to the HD60 that I have. Uh, I don't even have the Plus version. I think I just have the HD60, and this one's going to help out immensely. Now. How am I going to do all of this new stuff without upgrading my CPU? The GPU is going to run into bottlenecks with my old card. So my motherboard only supports AM4 processors. So I went with the second highest AM4 processor, the 5900X for $350. Um, there was a uh, $500 one, so $150 more than this cost for the 5950, but the differences in terms of core power and core speed and number of cores just wasn't enough to really make it worth it. This is a 12 core processor and the other was a 16 and the per, um, the per core speeds are actually higher on the 5900X. So I, I just couldn't justify spending another $150 on top of, uh, the original 350, but this one is a very solid solid um, CPU and I'll be unboxing this one and setting up soon and in order to set that up we're gonna need thermal paste uh, I do have a liquid cooler all in one so all I'm gonna have to do is clean off the thermal paste add some more thermal paste probably too much if you know uh, <laughs> I just add a little too much usually if you guys have seen me build a computer so that'll be fun uh, it's been a while since I've built one and I'll try to get it like good this time but a little over is never hurting anyone it's, it's good for um connectivity anyway i mean not connectivity <laughs> it's good for heat dissipation anyway it's not conductive so it won't mess up any of the parts if you put too much but yeah i got thermal paste xtm 50 it's just uh standard thermal paste it's it's good stuff uh i don't really have a preference you know the arctic silver stuff like that is good um but yeah i just got some thermal paste because i need to install it and finally Went a little overkill here. Um, I went with two sticks of 32 gigabytes memory. So 64 gigs total, 3200 megahertz, just because I wanted to stay safe. I don't need to overclock or anything like that. I want very stable memory. I don't need fast memory necessarily. It's nice that it's faster than my old cards, but I don't need super fast memory. What I need is stability because I don't want anything crashing and I just want everything to be able to run. So I went overkill and I got 64 gigs of RAM on two slots. I could have done this on four, but then I couldn't upgrade later. <laughs> yeah, upgrade later. Um, Having this will allow me to get 128 later if I need to and get into any of those crazy render pipelines that I've been getting into. Um, but I think 64 will give me enough of a speed boost in Premiere to make it worth it. And um, I don't really need to upgrade for a while. And if I do, I can always just add another two sticks in and I'll be good to go. So kind of future proofing here with this one, but exciting nonetheless. Uh, about $150 for 64 gigs of memory. And that's it for this tech haul. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start recording some of the unboxings for these. And I hope you'll check out those videos as well. We're going to open all these up and then I'm going to get stuff installed and get back to work. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Peace.